There's a secret world that you probably aren't aware of. Traders borrowing millions to invest with no collateral. But there's a catch. If they can't return the money within 10 seconds, they could lose everything. So who are these traders? Well, they call themselves the Flash Boys, and they aren't making your average order book trade. This is lending on steroids, and it could jeopardize the entire crypto ecosystem. So welcome to the dangerous dog-eat-dog -dog world of Flash trading. Speaking of only 10 seconds to take advantage, you can take advantage of signing up for my Patreon linked in the description. That you'll have access to my full portfolio and buy alerts that have landed me up more than 100%. The year is 2018, and Marble, a now defunct smart contract bank, introduces us to something radically new, flash loans, a type of loan that could never exist in our traditional lending system. So foreign to what we're used to in traditional finance that even today, there isn't a good analogy for it. The term comes from this book by Michael Lewis. Flash Boys is about the wild world of high frequency trading in the US. With flash loans, for the very first time, you could borrow as much as you wanted to with zero collateral, as long as the funds were returned within the same transaction. Suddenly people were borrowing millions, yes, millions of dollars owning, guess how much? Nothing. This meant anyone could be a crypto whale. However, the idea didn't get much traction at first because the market was turning bearish at the time and hype was starting to slow down in the crypto markets. And the world started forgetting about flash loans altogether. And that is until Aave jumped in the scene in 2020. So you might be asking yourself, why would anyone borrow millions of dollars within one transaction. They have to give it back within 10 seconds. And the answer is profit. To help us understand how much could be made with flash loans, I chatted with software engineer Andreas. I mainly use them for uh, arbitrage trading. There was no use case flash for flash loans back then because people didn't know what to do with those flash loans. If we want to see a more clear example, that one, we know that a flash loan happened here uh, for sure. So that, that one guy made $300,000 in 10 seconds. Yeah, that one guy, yeah. There are three main reasons you might choose to take out a flash loan. The most popular is to take advantage of an arbitrage opportunity. So picture this, your mom trades apples for $2 and your dad trades apples for $3, they're, they're competitors. <laughs> if this remains constant, you just discovered an infinite money glitch by buying from your mom and selling to your dad. Yes, this is gonna mess up your inheritance, but you can make money in the short run. This is known as an arbitrage opportunity. Eventually your dad says, hey, I have way too many apples. So he lowers the price, hoping to get rid of that extra supply. This means the opportunity has essentially closed and the range between the three and $2 apples narrows with each transaction. This is what makes markets efficient. There's actually an interesting book on this called A Random Walk Down Wall Street that explores these concepts even further. Here's how arbitrage could work in crypto. If Solana is $160 on KuCoin, but it's only $157 on Coinbase, depending on fees, you could profit off of this price discrepancy. Flash loans allow you to do this without ever actually actually buying Solana. So basically this person found that there was a big price discrepancy between Uniswap and SushiSwap. Yeah, among uh, three, three different uh, okay. uh, pairs and exploited yeah. that difference to uh, to get the profit. Now, a second reason for flash loans is called collateral swaps. This would make a traditional banker's head spin. In order to borrow an asset traditionally, you need collateral, something worth money that shows that you're good for the loan. In regular finance, collateral is fairly fixed. If you borrow $100,000 against your home, you can't easily decide tomorrow that you'd rather switch and instead borrow against the pile of gold that you conveniently own instead. You know, you would have to do all sorts of paperwork. You would need to go through a refund financing process and get the proper approvals. With a flash loan, you're actually able to swap out your collateral on a loan for another asset within a single 10 second transaction. And then we have self liquidation. If it's found that the collateral you put up for a loan is no longer worth enough to keep that loan, you will be liquidated, losing all of your money. With a flash loan, you can actually borrow money for free plus transaction fees and then liquidate yourself and repay your own loan. A concept that is confusing because it goes against everything we know about traditional finance. It, it, it's like having your cake and eating it too. Borrowing money for free to trade or to pay back your own loan to save yourself. It doesn't seem real or legal for that matter, but it is. 
Now, even though there's no collateral, there are still risks of your transaction not going through successfully. The first risk is being front run. So remember that analogy where the mom and dad are trading apples for whatever reason? Well, arbitrage opportunities don't last forever. That's because once someone takes advantage of an opportunity, it gets closed off. A bot may notice your transaction in queue for an opportunity and bid a higher transaction gas fee taking that transaction right out of your hands. Now, another problem is price slippage. So let's say you find an arbitrage opportunity where an asset has a price mismatch of 10%. You buy it for $100 and you aim to sell it for $110. You need to consider slippage, supply, and demand. As you sell your asset, you are supplying it into an exchange. This increase in supply may lead the asset's price to drop lower if demand doesn't keep up at that same $110 price. This is mostly an issue on large trades. Finally, the biggest risk is network fees. In Aave's case, they take a 0.09% fee. Not too shabby considering that you're leveraging potentially millions of dollars. So if you borrow $1 million to buy from one exchange and sell it off on another, you could be looking at a five digit profit while only losing out on a $900 fee plus you know, some additional transaction fees. The risk here is that you need to pay transaction fees whether the transaction is successful or not. That's where you can potentially lose some money. So if borrowing millions without any collateral and having free reign to send funds from a smart contract to pretty much anywhere on the same network sounds like a recipe for a disaster, you'd only kind of be right. So if you understand basic computer programming, you're probably ready to execute a flash loan. But at what point does the 10 second loan become Nicolas Cage's Gone in 60 Seconds? Well, take a look at the cruel fate of Pancake Bunny. On May 19th, a hacker made off with about $45 million in a flash loan exploit, tanking the price of Bunny tokens by 96% from $220 down to around $10 within a single day. Weeks later, it still couldn't manage to break $15. And that wasn't the end for Bunny Finance, because on July 16th, the company's new Polygon blockchain fork, Poly Bunny, got hit with yet another flash loan attack, minting $2.1 million worth of Poly Bunny tokens, tanking that token from around $10 to below $2. Some people think that Pancake Bunny knew about this exploit and it was an inside job, but whether it was or not, here's how it was done. First, the hacker borrowed more than 700 million in BNB from seven Pancake Bunny lending pools and around 3 million in Tether. They used this to manipulate the price of BNB using a bug in. Pancake Bunny's BNB USDT liquidity pool, this allowed them to mint almost 7 million Bunny tokens. The hacker then dumped these tokens for about 2.4 million BNB, causing the price of Bunny to plummet. After repaying the flash loans, the hacker was left with over 100,000 BNB worth about $45 million. The exploit here was a result of a flaw in the Pancake Bunny protocol. Once the hacker knew how the protocol was determining prices, all he had to do was manipulate the price of each component to game the system and steal the money. A bunny that even Nicolas Cage couldn't put back in the box. Put the bunny back in the box. Now, another example is the attack on Cream Finance through a similar flash loan attack. This was the third largest hack in DeFi history. The breach involved several different tokens that took advantage of a loophole in how automatic market makers discover the price of an asset. The various hacks did have one big benefit though. The community did some digging and found that the vulnerability in a lot of these attacks was due to using centralized oracles. Just one reason why many people have been rushing to Chainlink over the past two years. Without oracles, blockchains are basically stuck in their own world without any idea of what's happening outside of their own ecosystem, making them ripe for exploitation. The completely new technology of flash loans are causing profiteers to take a look at old dApps to see if they can go ahead and exploit their systems. And this is where we're at now, a new gold rush in crypto, a pirate era of flash loans where anyone can search for opportunities within smart contracts as long as they can get out within 10 seconds. So here's a question that I wanna ask you. Is it ethical to exploit code for profit? Of course, this is uh, the other side of flash loans. And I believe we should not put a black label on those new financial products. Uh, it is just what happens with every new technology. To me, I don't see a major issue with flash loans. Every system has their own individual quirks and blockchains have the quirk of settling transactions in batches. Because transactions are settled in batches, this allows people to use the funds within that transaction as long as they put everything back where they found it before the transaction settles. And ultimately, no one should be hurt. 
Of course, we don't want black hat actors to steal from people or steal from exchanges, but it seems with time, systems will be built in order to prevent the darker side of flash loans. From here, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iTrust Capital. iTrust allows you to place your crypto in a Roth retirement account. What this means is you can buy, sell, and trade crypto and pay zero capital gains on your wins. This is amazing for traders. With a Roth, you pay your tax upfront when putting money into the account, and at retirement, you pay no tax once you start pulling out at age 59 and a half years old. This is probably the most simple way to save on all capital gains. iTrust will be linked in the description of this video. If you use that link to open an account, you'll receive $100 in free Bitcoin just for joining. Now, next up, I recommend you watch this video covering other underground investment strategies. And I would like to thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a profitable day.